are generally right below that uh, previous storeroom that we couldn't get into, so my guess is that's probably what opened up. I think we've spoken to just about everybody in the castle, uh, but I want to go back to British first so we can talk about poor old Weston before we head back up there. Yes, Lugan? Lord British asks. Weston. Lord British listens, listens to your story about Weston. He looks concerned. I do not recall this case. Let me check. Hmm. He quickly scans a large scroll. Imprisoned for the theft of one apple from the royal orchards. Ludicrous! Someone must have usurped mine authority. Thou mayest consider this man pardoned. An investigation will commence immediately into the circumstances surrounding his arrest and into this fellow, Fig. My thanks to the Avatar. No problem. All right. Talk to you later, British. Goodbye, Lugan. Do come back soon. Oh, nice tool. Hello, Chuckles. Don't want to talk to you right now. I think he, Chuckles is the only person left with actual any actual unused uh, dialogue prompts, but he's a pain in the ass, so we're going to leave him alone for now. <coughs> Let's check to see if Weston's gone. He is. What do you have to say for yourself? You see a tough-looking palace guard who takes his job very seriously. We already spoke to you. You don't have anything to say. Goodbye! Uh, Alright. Let's check on that storeroom and grab that armor. Yeah! Let's go! Ooh, and we have a gun, a musket, 50 ammunition, cool. All right, let's load up here. So I think what I'm going to do... Hmm, I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's give Spark the gun. That seems like the best idea. Uh, we'll give the arrows to Sentry, because like I said, I like to have him carry my extra weapons, but that maxes him out, carrying capacity-wise, which is down here, by the way, I don't think I ever mentioned that, but it's relatively obvious. Uh, Shimino's going to stand and bang with his two-handed sword, so let's give him the plate mail, I assume this is, plate leggings, plate armor. What do they call this? A gorget? Gorget? I don't actually know. And the gloves. And the great helm. We can probably ditch the buckler. Uh, but I will take... What is this? A curved heater. That will sound... seems better than... A spiked shield? Uh, do I want to have... no, I'll just leave the spiked shield. I won't give it to Sentry. He's maxed out weight-wise anyways, and Spark, you will need some ammunition to go with that gun. Musket, right. Uh, okay, sweet. So there wasn't really much to loot in the castle. The only thing that I think we could use, and I actually don't know if we need it anymore, oh yeah, I guess we could still use it, are Jeffrey's Gauntlets. Uh, but he's in the room, and I don't want to get arrested again, so we'll have to come back later. Okay, we'll probably just find some more gauntlets at some point anyways. Uh, so we got a couple very minor quest prompts out of all that. Um, one was to deliver the the bill of punitive action for distribution of waste products in Lock Lake to the uh, mayor of Cove, which is the town just east of here. Uh, and we also, uh, we, lear we learned about our, uh, well, Lord British's ship, which is now our ship um, that is in Vesper. Uh, we should have the deed for that. Did I give that to somebody? Iolo, probably. 
yes, great, the Golden Ock, which is in Vesper. Um, and we got the prompt to go speak to Inamo's parents, uh, or no, the leader of the Gargoyles, uh, and, and f eventually find out who Inamo's guardian parents are in Turfin. Uh, but we also have basically all of Britain left to explore, so we'll start off with that. Uh, Britain, of course, is the largest place, the largest city in the game. And I've got to remember to leave the doors open of places that I go so I can use it as a reminder that I've been there. So far, it's been very anticlimactic. I will take that garlic, though, because garlic is a reagent. And reagents are good. Let's see what is up here. What is that harpsichord? Oof, sounds awful. What's this? Or one of the beasts for the harpsichord. Or one of the beasts for the harpsichord. I guess that's what we're listening to. Play directing. Analyses, communication, analysis, communication, and style by Francis Hodge. Within the pages of this highly respected textbook, one can find the highly touted and sometimes controversial methods of staging a play. Written by an eminent professor emeritus from a university in a distant land, this book is considered by most thespians as the definitive, definitive source book of, on directing. <coughs> Excuse me. Candle. Nothing. Jeez, don't you people leave your valuables anywhere easy to find? Thou shalt use the brush and pigments, Lugan. Can we do that? Finger painting again? No. Screw you. Uh, Alright. Let's stay in town for now. Interesting little place here. Looks very fancy. That's probably a good sign. Some rolls. I don't need your bed rolls. Haha. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> okay, well that was boring. Let's, uh, actually, let's just go back down this way. Where is everybody? Ooh, there's a key. Ooh, and lockpicks. I'll definitely take the lockpicks. I think there's anything in here. So I will definitely take the key, I just want to make sure I don't get it confused, because I do not have a bag to put my keys in yet. I mean, and even if I did, I'm not sure it would be that helpful. I already checked in there. Okay, so we got a key. There's a locked door. Can't imagine this key works, but we gotta try. Nope, and lockpick. Oh, I only have six. That's okay, it's easy. they're easy to buy. But neither worked, okay. So that door takes another key. Ooh, gold nugget. I'll take that. Thank you. And nothing else. Excuse me. Ooh, another gold nugget. I'm going to take it. I'm also just going to close the door. I really don't want to go to jail again. That 
caught me off guard, first of all, and second of all, kind of sucked. I'm going to take that torch, too. Because torches are handy. Oh, and I'll take the meat and the bread. Give that bread to Boots for five, or excuse me, the mutton to Boots for five, uh, five gold. Chicken raising by Danis Gone. Dehennis gone. While handling chickens is a relatively easy task, as is collecting eggs, there are several pieces of information that will be of much use to the novice owner. For example, quite a number of hens have soft, delect fluff on their underside, which they developed as chicks, but never outgrew. As a result, the coarse straw of the nest tends to irritate their hide. As a result, many hens will bury their eggs beneath a thin layer of straw. This provides warmth that the egg is missing because the mother will not fully set herself down upon the egg. In addition, most hens do not lay their eggs at the same time as their sister hens. A hen must rest at the, at mi the minimum of three minimum of three hours before she will be before she will capable of producing another. And do not be concerned if more time is necessary for thy hens to create more of their offspring. I wonder how much of, if any, of that is true. I have no idea. Uh, okay, that was a good little find. Uh, we'll stay in the city. Oh, s uh, I'm not gonna go in there right now. <laughs> if I remember correctly, that place is trapped, I think, and I don't want to mess with it right now. Thou art what thou art what thee eats. Shouldn't it be thy? By Fordras. Within within these pages thou wilt find the comparative analysis of many of things we humans place in our bodies in the name of food. I will attempt to, to provide for thee information on what constitutes good food and what constitutes bad, and will display the information by mentioning each each type from best to worst, first in terms of nutritional value, and second by taste. Whoops. No, I'm not going back. Obviously, not everything that tastes good is nourishing. Uh, at the top of this list, I must put down silver leaf. The taste is absolutely exquisite. Short of that, I recommend roast mutton with a lovely Minoxian glaze sauce and a potato. Add a potato as a side course, with the whole meal preceded by a few raw vegetables, and thou truly hast a wonderful feast. For a second course, I would suggest. Uh, actually, that is somewhat useful information, so I will go back and read the, the middle part. Uh, a large chop of fine meat, including mutton, fowl, ham, or ribs, is by far the most nourishing. This does not include other forms of beef, however, for they are usually served in smaller portions. Pork and sausage are also lower on the proverbial scale, for they are not quite as filling. In place of meat, I would recommend flounder, cheese, or potatoes, for they are also quite good for thee. In some instances, trout, fish and chips, and some breads will pass for a meal. An egg and most any other fruit and vegetable, including an apple, a banana, a carrot, a pumpkin, a bunch of grapes, and various cakes will suffice in a pinch. However, despite its delectable taste and extravagant price, silverleaf meals have absolutely no value on this chart at all. The moral is, my friend, never pass up meats when thou hast the chance to dine upon them. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, basically just a guide to generally how to feed your party. Um, uh, with, with, you know, big heavy meats being the most filling, and uh, if you're only feeding them fruit and vegetables and whatnot, then they're, you're going to need to feed them more and more often and so forth. Um, okay. I uh, don't... Oh no, isn't there a back room here? We've spoken to them already. The barmaids. We don't need the dried meat. Locked. If this is what that opens, it's going to be lame. But I guess we did just find it pretty easily. But that's not it. Bread. I don't want to buy bread, but do you have anything interesting to say? You see a very clean-looking, portly young man who waves at you frantically. Name. My name is Wilhelm, although no one calls me that. I prefer to be addressed as Willie. Thank thee very much. 
I don't know where I'm going with some of these. Job. I'm the baker here in Britain, and I make the sweetest bread thou hast ever tasted. Hast thou had a chance to sample any of my bread yet? No. Then here, thou must have some. He tears a piece of bread off one of several loaves he is carrying and stuffs it into your mouth. There. Is it not the sweetest bread thou hast ever tasted? It is, is it not? You chew and as fast as you can you chew as fast as you can in order to answer him. Uh yeah. He grabs your face by the cheeks and plants a big kiss on your forehead. Thou art truly a person of good palate and refined taste. Bread. My bread is the finest in Britannia. It is renowned for both its pleasant taste and its very reasonable price. But it is a lot of work, making enough to satisfy the constant demand for it. I need to hire someone to help me. Hire? Thou couldst work for me here, in the shop making bread, or I will buy sacks of flour from thee. Thou couldst buy them wholesale, and pause, and I will pay thee four gold per sack. Dost thou wish to work here in the shop for me? Willie asks, hopefully. Yeah, sure. Excellent. Thou canst start work immediately. I shall pay thee five gold for every five loaves of bread. Oh, no, I don't actually want to do that. No, sorry. I thought you were asking if you were, if I could bring you flour, which that I that I can, well, I, might, I may do. Very well, but I warn thee that employment is hard to find in these times. That's fine. Baker. He nods. Yes, I am a baker, and I have many secret recipes passed down to me by my father and mother. Why, there are even those who say I am a master baker. And there are those who call me a donut, he says with a frown. Donut? He gives you a long, puzzled look. After a moment, he takes one of his loaves of bread and swats you over the head with it. Master Baker? Yes, many people tell me that. Now thou dost say it too. If thou dost say so, then it must be true. Willie takes a bite of his own bread. Mmm, I am a master baker. Father and mother? Willie wipes away a tear. Gone, both of them gone to join mine ancestors in the great kitchen in the sky. I will never be able to cook as they did. Still, I plod along trying to keep the family name alive, and that is why I am a baker. But I suppose it is not the only reason. Why? Actually, there is a very good reason why I am a baker. Reason? Because the way to a woman's heart is through her stomach. Why, I have two women in love with me right now, and I did not even have to pursue either one. Two women? He sighs. If thou must know, their names are Jeanette and Gay. I don't th have we met either of them? I don't think so. Gay? Gay, who runs the costume shop, is, is of more interest to me, but she is a fellowship member, and I have no wish to become one. I hope thou dost not prevent us from courting. It does not prevent us from courting. And what about Jeanette? Jeanette is a pleasant enough girl, but to be honest, I cannot see myself with a tavern wench. She thinks I have not noticed how she feels about me. Frankly, I wish she could just she would just leave me alone. Secret recipes? Oh dear, do not tell me that thou art yet another person who is trying to pry one of my secret recipes out of me. If that is what thou art after, then thou wilt just be disappointed. Okay, bye. Good day to thee, my lord, and bon appetit. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Sorry, I'm all stuffed up. Hello. You see a woman who oozes partially sincere friendliness. Name? My name is Gay. Job? I oversee the clothiers here in Britain when I'm not pursuing the teachings of the Fellowship. Fellowship? Fellowship is the philosophical group devoted to the teachings of a truly great man named Batlin. In the absence of the Avatar... Oh, we've, we've heard this already. Blah, blah, blah. Nine o'clock. Yeah. Uh, clothiers? At our clothiers shop, we have the finest silks and garments to buy thou, hath, thou hast ever seen. Important for every corner of Britannia to cater to all tastes. Willie. Yes, he is a very amusing fellow. I am quite taken with him, and I do see him against my better judgment. He does seem like the type to join the he does not seem like the type to join the fellowship, though. Since the fellowship is my whole life, I do not know if there is a place in it for him. I have not made up my mind about that yet. Okay, good luck with that. Bye. Good day, my lord.
Hello. You see a young, wiry teen. Hello, lad. This is Lugan, the Avatar. This is my young apprentice, Coop. How goes things, Coop? Not too badly, my lord. I sold a triple crossbow this morning. Lovely, lovely. Keep that gold coming in. That's what I always say. That's what you always say, I Iolo. Uh, you're Coop? My name's Coop. Job? I'm the manager of Iolo's bows. Master Iolo has entrusted me with this responsibility. Iolo, you have your own bow shop? I don't know what the word is. Fletcher? I don't know what it is. If there's anything thou dost want in the way of bows and arrows, please say so. Iolo's bows? Iolo opened this shop many, many years ago. He opened Iolo's south in Serpent's Hold more recently. He's becoming quite an entrepreneur. Responsibility. I sell many goods, but I also plan to perpetuate the good name of Iolo by becoming a master archer. Iolo has taught me well. Yes, the lad is good. He was good before I taught him in the first play or before I taught him the first lesson. What I would not give to join that group and go adventuring, but then there would be no one to run the shop, so I cannot go. But some day, anyway, I please myself in the evenings by singing with a musical group. Singing? My group is called well, it's called the Avatars. I hope that that I hope that does not offend thee. The Avatars. The band is just me and two musicians from the music hall. We play at the Blue Blow Blue Boar every night. I sing and write lyrics. The other two play the instruments. Please come to hear us. Bows and arrows. We sell all kinds of bows along with arrows and bolts. If thou dost wish to buy something, please say so. What do you sell? What wouldst thou like to buy? Triple crossbow. That does sound pretty cool. But we haven't even been in... I don't even think we've had any combat yet. So let's not get a triple crossbow. Even though I'm pretty sure we can afford it. They're quite expensive. Uh, tell me... What do you know? Tell me what I owe. Hello, boss. Greetings, lad. Thou art looking well. The same to thee, my lord. Oh, well, that wasn't... That was anticlimactic. Okay, bye, Coop. Goodbye. Hello. Oops. You see a shrewd looking man who smiles as if he's just seen his next customer. I am Grayson, my lord, a humble and honest man. Job. Why, here in Britain I sell the best armor and weapons that money can buy. In my spare time I do deeds for the fellowship. I don't know why I put the emphasis on deeds there. Fellowship? It has been very beneficial in my life. I was on the verge of going out of business before I joined, and now I am more prosperous than but ever before. Out of business? Thou dost see, I am convinced that my failures were all due to my bad attitude. It took the teachings of the Fellowship to change the way I used my mind and to turn me in the proper direction. Beneficial. I was never sufficiently forward or aggressive enough to be successful as a, me as a merchant, but the Fellowship changed all that for me. Changed. By applying the values of the Triad of Inner Strength to my life, I have accomplished what I set out to do with my life. My armor and weapon shop is successful, and I have a place where I belong in the Fellowship. What do you sell? I sell a complete line of armor and weapons. Which wouldst thou care to inspect? Let's look at armor. Grayson looks you up and down. Dost thou truly believe that thou art sufficiently protected in what thou art wearing? In truth, I fear for thy safety if thou shouldst become involved in combat. Are thou interested in buying something today? I'll take a look. What wouldst thou like to buy? Just want to see what you have. You do have plate armor. How much is plate armor? 300 gold. I'm not, I'm not gonna buy that. Like something else? No thanks. Uh, actually, let's check out the weapons. Let's just see what you have. After looking at you, Grace, oh, blah blah blah. Yeah. I'd most like to buy. Sword? No, we don't need anything. What does the two handed sword go for? 250. No, I'm not going to buy that. We have at least two. Uh, no, I'm good. Alright, bye Grayson. Oh, my mouse keeps getting stuck. <coughs> you see a man whose boyish face is set with scrutinizing eyes that look as if they have seen much. Name. My name is Sean. Job. When not tending to fellowship affairs, I am a jeweler here in Britain. If thou dost wish to buy something, say so. 
uh, jewel jeweler. It is very delicate work. It requires a special touch that only a few have. Thou must know precisely how to handle precious materials. Only the finest of craftsmen become jewelers, and they receive the highest compensation. Finest craftsmen? As I have told thee, I only the finest of craftsmen become jewelers, and I am the finest of jewelers. Does that not tell thee something? Sean sniffs. My business makes more money than the mint, he laughs forcibly. Precious materials? I constantly require new materials with which to create my very special jewelry. I am always in the market to buy gems. If thou dost ever come across any, I am the man to come to if thou shouldst want to sell them and make money. I have some gems. Dost thou have a gem for sale? Yes. I will pay thee thirty gold coins per gem. Is that price agreeable? Yeah. I see thou hast three gems. Here is thy payment. Great. Ninety gold. Right on. Uh, do you like it here in Britain? I moved mine entire business here to Britain to be near the main branch of the fellowship. Thou hast no idea how much my business improved after joining the fellowship. Y yeah, you're the second person to tell me that. Third, maybe? Second in a row. Uh, fellowship. Even thou mayest join the fellowship, and I can tell thee more about it. The Fellowship is a group that has been gaining much population popularity in recent years with the people of Britannia. We've heard this before. No, I don't want to hear about the philosophy. Uh, okay. Thanks, Sean. Uh, we'll probably be seeing you again, because that was a good price on jewels. Gems. I am sure thou must be on thy way. Sean smiles. Uh, okay. Let's go one more here. <coughs> Oops. Stop that. Oh. I meant to check uh, the jewel, jewel, the door, cage door in the jeweler to see if the key worked. Uh, before you stands an old sailing man whose determined face appears to have weathered many a storm. Name? I be Clint. Job? In my youth, I was a sailor who sailed across the sea in tall ships. Now I must content myself solely with selling ships and sextants to others. You know anything about the crown jewel? The crown jewel came to Britain? Not any time recently, most certainly not. I remember the crown jewel, and it has not been to Britain for a long time. Okay. Seemed a little on the nose, but... Of course, this was in the day when it took mighty men to be a sailor. Nowadays, those who set out to sea would not have lasted a day. But I suppose it is the nature of the universe that everything slowly becomes more tame. Tame? Soon all the monsters will die off, and the whole world will join together in trust and worthiness, and unity like all those the Fellowship people say. Bah! The world was a better place when everybody fought everybody else, I say. Fellowship? It is always the best thing to make thine own way in the world, and not listen to what thou art told to believe. Thou hast better remember that. Uh, what do you sell? If thou art in need of a ship, I hold the deed to a fine one. Thou wilt need the sextant to help thee steer her true. No, I don't need either. May thy travels do well. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, just check the door with the key. And check uh, Clint's place out here. That's just an empty ship deed. Do -do 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 -do. Another empty ship deed. No, I don't need either, Clint. Uh, I think somebody needs some boots. God damn it. We don't need some boots. <coughs> Locked. Okay, well, the key probably doesn't do it, because I can't imagine the key to the chest in his bedroom was in somebody else's bedroom, but let's see. It's actually... I don't like the positioning here. There, that's better.
Nothing. Let's try it. Lock picks. Pick broke. Let's try again. Unlocked. Hey. We'll take those not in front of him. Lock picks and a gem. Great haul. All right. Thanks, Clint. Um, so we'll end things there and pick back up again in, uh, and check out the rest of Britain next time.